Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to find what we call the expectation value of the momentum of a particle in a one dimensional box. Whenever we talk about the expectation value, we're really talking about the average value. So, in other words, we're looking for the average momentum of a particle in a one dimensional block, box called the expectation value of the momentum. Now, if this is the wave function of a particle in a one-dimensional box for any energy level n, then this is called the complex conjugate, and since we don't have an i in there, the complex conjugate is exactly the same as the original wave function. And here's the de derivative of the wave function with respect to x, and we're going to need that in just a moment because we're going to use what we call the momentum operator. So, by definition, the expectation value of the momentum of a particle in a one-dimensional box is the integral and of course it will be from negative infinity to infinity, but for the box it will go down from 0 to L, of the wave function times the momentum operator multiplied with the complex conjugate of the wave function. So when we plug in the values, here we can say we have the wave function, we have the momentum operator, and then here we have the complex conjugate of the, whoa, and that's not correct, this should be the sine. This should be the sine of that. I'm getting ahead of myself because I took the derivative there, but we'll get to that later. So that'll be the sine because it's again the complex conjugate of the wave function that looks exactly the same as the wave function itself. So now when we try to evaluate this, we first will take out all the things that are constant. So we have this multiplied times this, so we can take that out. So here we have the expectation value of the momentum is equal to 2 over L because it's this quantity times this quantity so that the root cancels out. We have the H bar over I, H bar over I, and then we have, let's see here, well we're not ready yet to take that out so we'll go ahead and do the rest. So we have from 0 to L of the sine of n pi x over L times the derivative with respect x of this quantity right here that will be equal to the cosine of n pi x over l. We still have the dx times the derivative of the angle which is n pi over l, so I need to make some room here, n pi over l. And that looks good. All right. So now we need to integrate this, and of course I was anticipating that integral, and here you see that the integral of the sine times the cosine is 1 over 2a times the sine square of ax, a of course being the n pi over l, that's the constant in front of x. So let's go ahead and integrate this. So this becomes equal to, that's the h bar over i, we'll put that first, then we have 2 pi n over l squared, and then when we integrate that, we get 1 over 2a. Now since a is n pi over l, that would be 2 n pi over l. So I can put that in the numerator. So instead of 1, we can just go ahead and write l, because we divide by n pi over l, the same as multiplying by its inverse. And then we get the sine squared of ax, that would be n pi x over l. And that's going to be evaluated from 0 to L. Now notice here we have a 2 pi n and a 2 n pi that cancels out. This L cancels out this L. So now we have h bar over i times 1 over L times this evaluated from 0 to L. And when we plug in the limits here, we get the following. We get h bar over i times 1 over L times, we plug in the upper limit, we get the sine squared of n pi l over l, the else cancels out, minus the sine squared of 0. And of course the sine of 0 is 0, but the sine of n times pi, doesn't matter what n is, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, for all values of integer multiples of pi, the sine of that will also always be 0. So in essence, this ends up being equal to h bar over i times 1 over l, times 0 for all values of n, which means that the expectation value of the momentum of a particle in a one-dimensional box is always 0 for any value of n for any energy level of the particle. Now that seems kind of strange. How can it be 0? Because we know the particle is moving back and forth. However, 
what we do realize is that whatever the motion is of the particle to the right, it's also the same as the motion of the particle to the left. There should be a symmetry there, and so since it's a positive value to the right and a negative value to the left, when you add those up, indeed they do cancel out and you do get zero. So the average value of the momentum, because particles are moving in an equal fashion to the right, as they are to the left, the average value will indeed be zero for any energy level of a particle in a box. So instead of talking about the expectation value of the momentum, which now we realize is zero and doesn't tell us much about the particle, maybe we should find the eigenvalues. Or in other words, the value of the momentum of the particles that do not depend on the direction. And maybe from that we can find what the actual momentum is in a single direction or the magnitude of the direction, which will tell us a little bit more than just the eigenvalue, or I should say the expectation value of the momentum of the particle. And that's how it's done.